Hi, I'm Ed from Cyvex, and this week on Cyvex Says, we're talking about our four wheel drive controllers and explaining how they work, uh, my, why you might want one, uh, and um, just an introduction into the system and what they do. This is a four wheel drive controller. This is a four wheel drive controller for our Toyota Yaris, and it's one of our most popular four-wheel drive controllers we sell at the moment. Um, so how do they work? The Toyota Yaris, as an example, uh, is primarily a front-wheel drive car. Um, but within the gearbox, it has a clutch pack, which is electromagnetically operated. You have spinning plates within the gearbox. It's all enclosed in oil. This oil is important, it's for cooling. And when you apply power through the clutch plates, they lock together and provide drive to the rear wheels. This is great, obviously, it enables faster acceleration. Um, in a front wheel drive car, if you have too much power and you accelerate hard, all the weight goes to the back, you get thrown back. The same happens to the weight on the front wheels. They try to lift up in the air and they will spin. So how do you accelerate faster? Rear wheel drive. Um, and so that system incorporating throttle position, engine load, other external variables from temperatures and so on, will decide how much power is sent to the rear wheels. Now this is where the limitations of the standard system kind of kick in. There are conditions where if you've modified or changed anything to do with the car, maybe even using a different set of wheels or anything, where the standard configuration isn't going to be ideal for your use. You might want to uh, have a situation whereby you want more rear bias. You might want to control the car in a different way, which you can't do if a car is primarily front-wheel drive. A front-wheel drive car into a bend has a tendency to understeer. It doesn't really want to go around the bend. If you have a, a, a kind of a short wheelbase car, which would be primarily rear wheel drive, it'd want to oversteer. So by varying the clutch locking um, action, you can kind of vary how the car responds into different conditions indeed. And the stability of the car is also affected. So this is where this little wire on our units comes in. That allows you to vary the amount of um, uh, engagement the clutch pack has under different conditions. Uh, so this is obviously something you can't do with the standard ECU. Uh, sorry, the standard all-wheel drive controller. Um, in addition to that, there's more to it. So this is controllable and it's programmable. Our four-wheel drive controllers allow um, you to take all the environmental uh, inputs coming into the car and to configure this to give you your optimum clutch control um, with additional sort of safety factors as well. The other thing that can happen, and this is what I mentioned about the oil cooling earlier, by its nature, if you have anything that's sort of slipping under heavy load, that produces heat. This heat gets dissipated into the oil. Um, Toyota's fallback system is quite um, aggressive, if you like. It just turns off the system. In a racing condition, you uh, potentially completely changes the dynamic of the car. Um, the Cyvex system allows that to be more progressive. It will still start reducing power where the clutch system and the oil starts getting perhaps too hot, but it won't do it in such a way that suddenly the way in which the car drives has completely changed so much that it kind of catches you off guard. Um, and these systems are very similar. So these are used across Audis, um, uh, Nissans, they all now, it's very popular, uh, even Subarus as well. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head any others, but they all work in a similar way of using clutch plate, uh, variable uh, clutch packs using electromechanical control. Before the need of these kind of units, you'd have a viscous coupled four-wheel drive. Uh, those, you know, you're going back to kind of uh, your Mitsubishi Evos and, and things like that from the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, um, but things have moved on since then. We now have more intelligent and capable transmission systems that need more intelligent and capable for drive controllers. If you found this interesting, or if you have any questions, um, ask them below, um, like the video, and um, yeah, follow us for more, and we'll see you on the next one.